everyone, and today I am doing a video with Brian. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Brian Lane. I am in the United States currently. So, what do you do for your job? I am a teacher, a school teacher. I've been a former school administrator, behavior specialist, several different jobs in the school system here in the United States. Um, <clears throat> but I am a teacher. I teach choir and I teach theater. And um, I'm also a volunteer firefighter and EMT on the side. But uh, those are my jobs. And as you can see, I do have Tourette syndrome. <clears throat> Fantastic that you do all those things. And so how do you find being a teacher? Like, is it enjoyable? And how does your condition affect that? <clears throat> It's a great question, um, and that, that comes up like all the time from different things. Uh, you know, one of the things that I do is I also am a member of the Tread Association of America Education Advisory Board and the, and the Diversity Committee, and I, I travel around the country and I, I talk with different groups, teachers, parents, students, uh, young people with Tourette, and that question always comes up, and it's, 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 I've never let it stand in my way. <clears throat> the first thing is I'm always very honest at the beginning of the year with my students um, and with my parents. I always let the parents know as well. <clears throat> and then, you know, the first week or so is kind of awkward, but they get used to my tics. I let them know we're going to have fun with it. Uh, I want them to feel comfortable. I want to educate them because that's, as you know, that's one of the biggest things about Tourette syndrome is the lack of education and knowledge of what it really is. <clears throat> uh, so that's, I, I've never let it stand in my way. Yes, at times it does get in the way, but uh, but like I said, we persevere, we go on, and we do a good job uh, with each other. <clears throat> That's good. Like I think it's important to like not let it stop you doing what you want to do, and like be resilient with it. And you know, if you have struggles, then find a way to like overcome it if you can and stuff. So I think that's really good that you don't let it sort of stand in your way of doing what you want to do. Um, yes, I think that's a that's an extremely good point. I you know that's one of the things I always encourage, and I it, it's ironic you would say that. I just right before we started the interview, I I posted on one of the Facebook pages. I know Facebook's ancient. I apologize, but I posted on one of the Facebook groups to a parent who said, "What is my child going to be able to do?" And I just explained to her, "You can your child can do anything they want to do. They just got to overcome and realize that they have something to offer to the world, and don't let it stand in your way." Yeah, it's also like maybe if somebody struggles to do things that other people might do, it doesn't mean they can't do something else that they enjoy because I think we all have gifts and stuff. So. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's an extremely good point. And the one thing I've learned with, you know, with people with threats, you know, like with you, I've been watching your, your channel for a long time. Um, you're very talented. You're very gifted. Um, and I think Tourette's helps us focus and, and helps us realize that, we can be better and be bigger and be more bold than than what we are given credit for. Yeah, I think that um, having threats can sort of teach you a lot and it helps you um, persevere and be resilient and stuff as well. So I think there are some positive aspects. Like what, what do you think that you have learned from your threats? Well, I think, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head with those two words, perseverance and resiliency, I think are excellent uh, adjectives used to describe what Tourette is, you know, if, if you can, if you can find that within you, um, you will be able to overcome and, and you will be able to, to, to find the best path for you. Um, I, I knew early on that I wanted to be a, an, a teacher and work in education. Um, I, I had a bit of a, a rough life uh, growing up and um, in, in a home that wasn't so good, but you know, I realized early on I wanted to be able to give back, and I think that's that's kind of where that came from, and and kind of led me down the path that I I am on and have been on. Yeah, you must be, um, you know, you must have great um, courage and resilience to like get through the difficult experiences, and then want to give back, and you know, because I guess you don't want anybody to feel the way you did or anything, and you just want to help people. Correct. And that's that's the reason why I do what I do. And that's the reason why I got involved with the Tourette Association here in America, um, because I wanted to I just wanted to be the example for those folks. You know, I I, I had teachers who were horrible. We all have had teachers who are horrible, like in every profession. And I know in today's world, it's so chaotic. Um, there are bad people in every job. 
um, but I wanted to to be different. I wanted to show students and I wanted to show adults uh, who didn't believe in me that that I can be that way. I can be OK and I can be good at what I do or at least try to be. <laughs> like, have you seen the film front of the class? Oh, yes, very many times. And uh, I actually have met and chatted with Brad Cohen many times. He's a wonderful young man. Oh, He's, he and I are in the same same uh, kind of you know, job, uh, school administration, teaching. And um, oh. when I first met him a few years ago, uh, it was an instant connection. And I, I love the man. I think he's a he's a great inspiration to so many. <clears throat> oh, that's amazing. Like, that's pretty yeah. amazing to know him because I've, I've watched Front of the Class. It's like my favorite film. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Well, I have a signed copy here. Maybe I'll send it to you if you'd like to have a signed copy of Brad's uh, movie. Oh, that is fantastic. That is awesome. Yeah. Now it's 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 old school because it's a DVD and I know we don't have those anymore, but uh, some of us old folks still have that stuff. <laughs> I watched it on YouTube because somebody put it on YouTube. I was like, I'm watching it there. Yes, <laughs> yes, I, I do. I have seen it on YouTube before. <laughs> so, how do your students react to your tips? It's it's been varied over the years. Um, you know, when I started teaching, like many people. Uh, as I got older, Tourette's kind of lightened and lessened. You know, that's, that's what we hear from the doctors all the time. Oh, when you get older, you won't you won't have these tics and blah, 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 blah. And that's, unfortunately, it's a group of uneducated doctors that we have in our in our world. Um, and uh, the, my apologies, my dog is, is playing. I can hear him. So I apologize for everyone. Um, I'll get it from him. So then we're good. Uh, so... You know, one of the things is when when I started teaching, I, I really didn't have a lot of ticks. And then about two or three years into it, it started to come back and come back kind of strong and <clears throat> has been pretty strong since then. <clears throat> Full force. Um, so some of my students, like anybody in the world, they accept it. They move on. They realize it's OK, that I'm going to be OK. Some students are very skeptical and don't like to be around it and are nervous and, and don't, you know, just very anxious about it. Um, but the one thing I would say, probably the most unique thing that's ever happened was when the first time, and this has been many years ago now, a student walked into my classroom with Tourette. Um, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting situation because, uh, you know, many people that are watching may not know, but when you get a couple of Tourette's together, it's, it's, it's usually an, an experience that is uh, like no other. Yeah. Uh, and ironically, that student did not know they had Tourette. They didn't know anything about it. So it was one of the greatest experiences of my life, and I'll never forget it, you know, helping that student learn and the parents learn. Yeah. So it's 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 always a mixed reaction. But like I said, after a couple of weeks, we usually get used to it. I do have the students who love to know the trigger words and to set me off and know how to get me off on tangents. But it is what it is. We have fun with it and I move on. <clears throat> yeah, like, that's really lovely that you're able to help that student and his family and stuff. And like, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your dog is amazing. Oh. Uh, you know, what's really sad is right before we started, he was really quiet and really sleepy. And I thought, oh, great. He's going to be good for the whole time. And for those who don't know, he is a puppy. He's only 11 weeks old. So He's adorable. Um, like, when you say, like, the students um, can kind of get used to it, that's good. Like, I found that because I did a work <coughs> with the teaching assistant. And the kids I was working with, um, at first, they were like, um, why are you doing that? Because I was, like, slapping my hands and stuff. And... I explained that I have threats and stuff, and thankfully, you know, they just get used to it. And sometimes <coughs> certain things can become background noise as well, I think, and <coughs> get it out because it's, it's, it becomes kind of normal to them because they're so used to it. Very true. Very true. Um, and one of the things, you know, as, as you know, one of the things is sometimes it gets so bad that we do need a break, that we need to get out of that situation. And that's always a unique experience. Fortunately, I've worked in several corporations where um, I've had a ton of support. That was the one thing I was most scared about as a teacher. How am I going to find someone? And, you know, you mentioned front of the class, you know, he, he struggled. Brad struggled at first to find a school that would give him a chance. But once they did, um, they realized they had a great teacher on their hands. And um, 
that's how I try to do it too. You know, I, I just try to show the administration and the people that I work with that I'm going to be okay if you just give me the chance. And so there are times I do have to take a break and have someone come in and kind of sit there for a couple of minutes. <coughs> like, I think it is so important. Like, yeah, we get support in school and stuff. Um, but, you know, when you get into the workplace, I think some people are worried about not getting support and stuff. And I can imagine that can be really difficult. And with the um, difficulty <coughs> getting chance as well, I feel like people make assumptions <coughs> about threats. Um, but they're uneducated assumptions and they sort of just see the threats and, and not the individual and their gifts and talents and stuff. Yes, that often happens. And, you know, my my first few months, even with the other teachers in administration, are like, hey, who is this guy? Is he going to be OK? And then I think once they realize that, wow, he does uh, he does OK. I, and I'm not trying to brag on myself. I just go in and do what I do and try to do the best I can. And you know, hopefully my students will learn and grow and be able to prove that to the other teachers. And I think once they realize that, they embrace it a lot more. Um, so I love that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're an amazing teacher. And I think it's amazing as well because you not only teach them like the curriculum, like what, what you're there to teach, but you teach them about acceptance and diversity as well, just, just by being yourself and authentic and stuff. And I think that's great. Also, are you wearing a Hamilton t-shirt? I am, yes. I love Hamilton. I'm so excited. July 3rd, it comes on Disney Plus, and I, I'm counting the hours. So, um, Do you like Hamilton? I like the songs. I haven't actually seen the musical, but I really like um, the song, like, That Would Be Enough, and also yeah. the, the rap one. Like, well, Very most good. of the rap, but I mean, the main Alexander Hamilton rap. Oh, so, yes, yes, yes. I know what you're talking about. Hey! Yeah. Like, I was but, actually just playing it uh, right, you know, earlier today, I was playing the Hamilton soundtrack on my piano. So, yeah, I'm a huge, I've seen it three times. I'm a huge Hamilton fan. And I didn't think I would like it going into it because uh, Broadway musicals are my, my, my thing. I love them. And I just was afraid, you know, this is a modern thing. I'm not going to like it. And it took me about two minutes and I fell in love. So it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, one of the funny things is <clears throat> the... <clears throat> The main Alexander Hamilton um, song is one of the only songs I really know mostly off by heart. So I'm really bad at like, remembering songs and stuff, but it is quite funny because <coughs> if I sing, my tics decrease. And there have been times when I've been out and I've been, I've been like feeling tics <coughs> on and I, I start singing ha the Hamilton song and it's really funny because I'm just there and I burst out the song to try not to tick and it's actually quite funny. That's actually very good. And you know that, that comes up a lot too. And I know I'm not alone here. When I perform, you know, I'm an actor, I'm a singer, I'm a play, I play the piano, I play the, the organ as well, theater organ in specific. Um, I don't tick. Um, it's just that that focus and that calmness is amazing. And so it's, it's ironic you would say that. I mean, it doesn't surprise me a bit. It's amazing how, like, um, creative and, like, musically talented you are as well. And, like, I think I've noticed that quite a bit in the Tourette's community. Like a lot of people I've met in the community seem to be very musical or creative, and it does also help the ticks as well. Yes, uh, many people I've I, and I, I actually am I'm getting my my doctorate right now, and that's part of my study is the relationship between um, Tourette and the musical side of us, because so many, like you said, are talented somewhere in the in the performing arts field or the visual arts field. Um, and I, I'm, I know there has to be a correlation there, so I'm in the process of doing a lot of research on that. So, amazing. Like, I would, I'd love to like hear more about that because um, so many people in the community seem to be so creative, and that's something that I think is is wonderful. Like the creativity that comes with it. Of course, like threats can be really difficult, but I think there are some positive aspects as well. I agree. I agree. A hundred percent. So, do you have? any co-occurring conditions and how do they impact your life? Great question. Yes, I have several. Like uh, most people with Tourette's, there are very few of us who just have tics. Um, obviously the OCD, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of the OCD term when it comes to Tourette, and I, I believe you're the same way on this one. It's more of a Tourette OCD. Um, it's not the, the, the pure OCD that many people uh, uh, relate it to. And that's something I actually talk about a lot in my presentations. I learned that from a good friend and, and mentor in the, on the education advisory board. Um, but yes, many of the things I do are done in groups of three. Three is my number. Um, that was my number two. <laughs> what's that? That was my number as well, the number three. I did everything in three. 
Yeah, and I still do. I, I teach in threes. Everything I do, plan my day is in threes. When I go by, uh, well, for you guys, I believe it's petrol, but when I go buy gas for my car, it has to be in a, it has to end in a divisible number by three. And it just, that's my life. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's definitely a huge issue. I also have ADHD. Uh, I'm definitely one of those people who will be in the middle of a conversation and all of a sudden, whoo, there's a squirrel. Um, and then um, I also have anxiety and depression, lots of depression, very serious depression. Um, and then um, some sensory issues. That's, that's, those are the main ones. So definitely some sensory issues. Like but the OCD definitely is our obsessive compulsive behaviors, what I kind of call it, uh, is, is definitely a huge influence on the Tourette. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Like when, when you talk about the, the mental health conditions and stuff, those are things that, um, like the anxiety, depression, they can be hidden and people don't see it yet. It seems unfortunately so common in the Tourette <clears throat> community. And people um, around us probably aren't aware of how, how, much is going on inside they just notice the tick so I think it is really important to talk about actually sometimes the co-occurring issues can have just as much impact or mostly more impact than the ticks themselves. Yes I think that is an excellent point to make um, because I think you're exactly right especially when like you mentioned the depression um, I, and I, I can't speak for everywhere around the world but but where I live and in America when you are depressed, that's that's seen as such a negative thing and such a negative aspect of one's life that you we are we are kind of taught to keep it to ourselves and not express and share. And unfortunately, um, like you mentioned, that can often be much more than even the ticks that you see in here. So I, I agree a hundred percent with it, with your assessment on that. <clears throat> yeah, and like when society says like you should hide these things, that's obviously not a good thing because the more no speak about it the more awareness there is and I think to be comfortable talking about how you feel is actually really important because it allows other people to know that they're not alone and, and with empathy and stuff as well. Yeah and you know one of the things the reason why I, we're kind of sitting here today is because we connected through a group that you and a couple of other of uh, the wonderful Tourette youth in, a, in the world are have come together and tried to create a group for support and those kind of things are amazing. And I didn't have that growing up because, you know, I'm an old guy, we didn't have the internet, but, uh, you know, having that, that support system uh, with, with other adults, with, with other tickers of all ages is so important when it comes to this kind of stuff. It, it has changed my life without a doubt, the, you know, having those connections and being able to talk to someone in the UK, uh, you know, right now, uh, while I'm sitting here in, in the wonderful state of Indiana in the United States, you know, um, it's great to have that support and be able to talk about it and, and raise awareness <clears throat> and let others know they're okay. That's the big thing. <clears throat> like, I think the fact that there are people on the other side of the globe who we can relate to so much with such similar experiences is absolutely amazing. And it's an amazing sense of connection as well. Yeah, I think that's a great point, you know, and in, in today's environment, we're all connected right now by, by a terrible pandemic going on. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that that has made me and I hope a lot of other people realize that we have a lot more in common than we do apart, no matter where we are in this world. And um, I think it's so important that we connect with with our, our global neighbors, not just our neighbors down the street. Um, so that we can support each other. It's we're, we are a small dot in the universe, and it's it's just amazing that that we travel this planet and don't help each other enough. In my my opinion, <clears throat> definitely. Like I think <clears throat> can make such a difference when you have um, friendships and support that makes the world different. Um, and just being connected to people who understand. And like when you say with like the groups and stuff, like I've been to loads of groups and they have changed my life beyond measure. Like anyone I'd recommend like go go to a group or even if it's an online group like just connect with others it makes such a difference. I agree um, it's for me you know again being in a different generation than you uh, it's 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 changed my life uh, the, the the depression is not nearly as strong um, the feeling of aloneness which I know is huge in our community you know I, I went years before I ever met anyone else that had or even heard of Tourette um, I was one of the very few that was diagnosed when I was a child. Um, I just happened to get lucky. We had a new doctor in my hometown who had just graduated medical school and had just seen a few cases. And that's the only way that I knew and found out. And 
so I agree with 100 percent. I, I don't care if it's online. I don't care if it's, you know, your your local chapter or whatever. Get connected because there is nothing as valuable as that. Definitely. Like, I think going to groups has given me some of like the, the best friends ever and and ways to manage the condition and an understanding of myself as well, because I used to have a lot of self-doubt. Like I used to be like, um, is, am I doing this myself? Am I faking it? And then I realized that I was talking to other people and they're like, they all have those thoughts too. It's really yeah. interesting how like we all have the same sort of things yet don't always talk about it. And we're off, we're often accused of faking it, you know, by so many people. You can control it. You can do, you don't have to do that. And it's, it's just nice to find people, even if it's for an hour or a week to sit and just chat and know that, that we're okay. And we're, we're not, not as crazy as we may think or crazy as others think. So <clears throat> I think it, it does make such a difference to be with people who understand. And like, for me, it's quite interesting because before I even knew I had Tourette's, I was in the class with somebody with Tourette's and it's actually something that I, I can laugh about now, but I wasn't aware I had Tourette's. I had symptoms, but I didn't know what it's called. And right. There was another boy with Tourette's in my class, and we ended up barking at each other from the other side of the class, side of the classroom. And that's awesome. <laughs> and that's, that's awesome. <laughs> and then, just like about, I think it was about a year after that, I realized I have Tourette's. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's good. I mean, that's that's good. You were able to rate, find the, find out who you are and what you are uh, just by coincidence, and that's that's amazing. So, <laughs> like, I think. Also, getting the diagnosis, like, uh, as you say, like, some doctors don't really understand it. It took me about seven years to get diagnosed. So I think, like, getting the diagnosis makes such a difference because you can access support and you, you understand yourself. I think that's the most important thing because you can research it and, and then connect with others as well. I agree with that 100%. And it's, it's ironic you said that. I actually was responding to a parent, again, in another group mm, earlier this week who said, should I seek a diagnosis for my child? I, I suspect this. I have, I, she has Tourette's and, and she wanted to know, would it be worth it? And I just kind of went into that same, same explanation you had. Yes, fine. You just so that person has that validity and that, and that, that recognition of, yes, I have this, I'm different, but I can be me and be anything I want to be and have that support. Yeah. And I think that also like when you say it's like, embracing differences like sometimes being misunderstood can be hard but when you're misunderstood it means you have something unique to give to the world so I think that you can use that in a way and um, your uniqueness and it also again like teaches you a lot of stuff and I think it's in a way good to be different so I don't think people should be told like oh Tourette's is it a bad thing so of course it's difficult but um I think me and Christine made a video that, about that but you know you accept the person as they are and don't say this aspect of you is is wrong or something. Agree, agree, a hundred percent. And you know what's what's ironic, and I'm not trying to belittle anyone else with it, with any other disability. If you see someone in a wheelchair, you you know immediately they have a disability, and you feel for them, and, and you know you, you 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 look at them differently. And with us, it's it's not. It's always that skepticism, and do they really have it? Are they faking it? Yeah. Um, and I, people like you are doing an amazing job of raising that awareness, you know, with your YouTube videos. And, and you know, I, I just I think it's phenomenal so that we're able that you're able to sit out there and do that as, as a young person and, and change the world, believe it or not. Oh, thank you so much. That's really kind of you to say. <laughs> with that thing about um, like people thinking we're faking it and stuff, I've actually had that quite a lot. And I feel like, as you say, like other people with a, another condition wouldn't usually be accused of faking it but I know that for me um I was once like in the college library just sitting there <coughs> and kind of like doing that and whacking my legs on the floor and then the librarian came up to me and um was like why are you doing that because I don't have Tourette's and they're like yeah but do you really it's always the skepticism yeah. and doubt yeah, and I, I'm, I'm, I would be willing to bet everything I have that 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 librarian has never gone up to someone in a wheelchair and said, "Hey, can you just stand up and walk over here?" You know, that's that's the ironic thing. And again, I'm not trying to belittle people who who rely on wheelchairs for their life. It's just, you know, we've we've, we've, we've I've seen those pictures a hundred times that disabilities aren't always seen. You know, uh, we all are struggling with something, and we just happen to be struggling with this. <clears throat> like I think that um i did used to have a card as well like the, the cards that explain you have Tourette's. they come in very handy because i'm like yes see i do have it <laughs> i have proof yes i carry mine wherever i go um 
I have still the I have the plastic one. It's it's actually getting kind of torn up. I've had it for so many years, but I do carry it wherever I go. Especially, you know, in the United States with with the law enforcement issues, it's it's great to have if I happen to get pulled over in my car. So yeah. <clears throat> um good to have a way to explain it to people in a, in a quick way because sometimes if you're like anxious, like being stared <clears throat> at or people making comments, it's very difficult to explain. So I think if you have the card, it's a lot easier just to let people read it and hopefully they understand it a bit more. And especially in the pandemic, I, you know, I've shared with several people, you know, I have I have gotten death stares pointed at whispers, you know, when I'm out and about <clears throat> and I have my throat clearing tick going on or my coughing tick going on. People look at me like I am I am death walking and I'm not. I just I want, you know, it's just what I do. I've been doing that a lot longer than, than coronavirus has been around. So uh, yeah. when I go out, I, I try to wear a lot of my my Tourette shirts so I can advertise publicly. Hey, it's it's all right. <clears throat> I think it probably is like really difficult for people right now with like those sorts of throat clearing um, ticks and um, inappropriate ticks where people might um, do the worst thing you can do in a, in a situation. I've done that a lot. Like I have ticks where I'll just do the worst thing I can do in any given situation. Um, uh, so I can yeah. it's very difficult for some people, especially at, at this time with all the stuff going on. Yes, I agree 100%. And I, I know there have been a lot of folks who, who do have some of the more severe coprolalia who have really struggled with with the the issues, especially in America, with the with the whole black issue that's going on right now. Um, and they're scared. They're actually scared for their child or scared for themselves going out. You know, they're afraid they're going to be attacked. And that's that, that's a really a, a very real scary possibility. <clears throat> it is like I, I can imagine it provokes a lot of fear and anxiety in people with um those sorts of ticks because i i did used to have very extreme coprolalia um and also observational i would yell at like anything i saw the most inappropriate thing of course i didn't agree with it but that's the, the scary thing about coprolalia you don't know what you're going to come out with and it, it goes completely against what you actually think but for people around who don't understand they might just make assumptions like assume that you you mean and stuff and i think it's important to say that we don't intend what we pick Yes, and it's that's like I said, it's very scary in today's world that we're living in. Um, mm. I hope we get past it soon. I don't know, um, but I, I, yeah, I agree with you 100% on that. It's very, very scary. <clears throat> so, um, sorry, I'm just trying to. Okay. So, what advice would you give to a young person with Tourette syndrome? The best advice I would say is be you. You know, that's something I always tell tell my students, you know, when they ask me things, you've got to be you, no matter what other people think. Um, it's the best advice I can give anybody. Uh, don't ever let anything or anyone stand in your way. Um, I've talked with several people over the years that, you know, this teacher or my teachers told me I couldn't be a doctor because I have Tourette's. My teachers told me I couldn't do this because I have Tourette's. My mom and dad said I could never do this because I have Tourette's. And, you know, not to be disrespectful to any adult or anyone out there, you can do whatever you want. Um, like I say, you've got to be you. And whatever you is, be the best darn you you can be. I think that's really, really good advice. Like, I think being authentic and, and just being um, comfortable <clears throat> you are is so empowering and important because everyone has something to give to the world um, like we were saying and like society has this idea of how you should be but that idea is ridiculous because everyone's so different i agree and in today's world where where society is changing now's our chance to to seize that moment and uh, you know kind of carpe diem go out and change that the perception and and seize the day and and make that change <clears throat> like it's kind of <clears throat> amazing how i think interestingly in the sense of self-esteem my threats used to <clears throat> harm my self-esteem now i think it's helped it because i like being different and i can embrace it and by kicking in public i'm actually confident now <clears throat> so i think that that that's changed a lot as well like how do you think your threats has affected your self-esteem and stuff i think that's an excellent point i know at one point in my life you know we go back to the whole depression issue um again, pre-internet and pre-everything else like that, but 
you know, I was at a point where I thought I'm going to be worthless. I'm not going to be able to do anything. And I just chose one day, you know, when I went off to college that it's time, it's time for me to, to take over and uh, to embrace what I have and what I do and m work with what I have to make me a better person and to help make others a better person. And that's why I'm so excited every time I get the opportunity with the Tread Association of America to be able to go out and to help um, spread awareness and education. There is no greater feeling. <clears throat> like I, I agree with like what, what you said, like the passion that comes with like raising awareness because it's something that we love to do and it's a way that you can make a difference and you know that you're, you are helping people and, and sometimes changing lives as well. I think that that is something that is empowering because you see that you can use it to, to make a difference and follow your purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent. So, what would you say is the worst tick you have had? In my life? Yeah. Oh, dear. This is not good being old. I didn't think of that. <clears throat> um, there are a couple that are <clears throat> the worst I've ever had. I had a spitting tick that was pretty bad for a few years, and I hated that. I would spit, literally spit everywhere. Uh, I used to carry around a washcloth. Uh, to try to spit into that. Um, I hated that, that, that embarrassed me. That made me feel, made me feel, this is one of the few ticks that really made me feel not in control of, of what I, what I do. And then I also have a licking tick and I still have that one a bit, but it used to be a lot worse. Those are the two that really bother me without a doubt. Um, I don't know why it's just that they do. Um, mostly because of, probably because they're socially unacceptable and especially with COVID going around licking tick is not a good thing right now <laughs> so <clears throat> for me those are probably the two worst I've ever had I do have a touching tick that bothers me a bit but I've kind of gotten used to that so <clears throat> yeah I think like with the socially inappropriate ticks they can make it very difficult to like go out in public and stuff especially if you're around people who don't understand it can make it difficult to go out on your own sometimes <clears throat> so yeah and they can cause alarm if people around don't understand um I, was, I think my worst tick has has been like the um stomach crunching that's definitely not a good one at all um no. but, yeah <coughs> that's probably um one of the worst ones yeah. um <coughs> let me see what other questions are here um <coughs> would you want to cure your threats if you were given the chance Ooh, that question comes up every once in a while and I'll be honest with you, my answer has changed over the years. Uh, when I was younger, absolutely. I would have done it in a heartbeat, but not now because it has made me what I am and I think it's made me a better me. Uh, you know, I go back to what I tell their students, you gotta be you. Um, and I, I, I've, I've gotta practice that if I wanna preach it, you know, I've gotta be me. So I, I don't think I would now. Uh, number one, I've lived with it for so long, I don't know what it'd be like, uh, but number two, you know, like like we had and you alluded to earlier, it, it's what makes me unique, and so that's important to me. Because <coughs> I like being unique. <coughs> yes, but I, I like being unique too, and I think mine has also changed over the years. Like, um, I think uh, I made a video on this as well, but I think <coughs> when I was younger, because it was so severe, a cure would have been like really, really useful. Um, <coughs> but <coughs> I would say now that it's managed well and it doesn't like it's not really really severe i would say i'm i'm okay with it it's maybe who i am and i wouldn't change the experiences that it's given me yes i agree with that statement because i think it's made us better a better person and you know i think i alluded to this earlier it's it's obviously made you a more mature person without a doubt in my mind <clears throat> um thank you um i'm just <laughs> asking my question um how <laughs> it affect you when you were younger when you were a child like many I tried very hard and again this goes back to the way I was raised I told you I wasn't in a very good home I tried to hide it as much as possible I, I tried to keep it to myself uh, I tried to keep it from others uh, again mostly because there was so little known and because I was scared uh, I just was scared to be different we you know we live again I can't speak to everywhere around the world but we live in a society here where it's not okay to be different and you're looked upon, you're, you're looked down upon if you are different. So I tried very hard to keep it in and tried to suppress it, which 
you know, as anybody with threats knows, that just makes it worse later. Uh, <clears throat> so as what as long you know, even though I tried to hold it in, I, I didn't didn't do a very good job sometimes. Um, but most of the people that I, I knew and, and became friends with were more accepting. And I, I think that's the scary part. We're always afraid to say something because we're afraid of being rejected. I mean, that's just that's human nature. But I think the amazing thing is I have found that most people accept it and, and work with you if, if they care. And if they don't, you don't need them in your life anyway. So <clears throat> like I was once watching a threat documentary that said something like <clears throat> to mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind i think that's yeah i think that's great great advice (laughs) yeah and i I think it's just surrounding yourself with um people who are accepting and willing to learn and who um basically love you for who you are and and don't want you to change they they don't try and force anything um upon you to change or anything agreed agreed (laughs) so I think. Oh, I think I've got um one last question. Okay. What, um, what advice would you give to um somebody with threats who wants to be a teacher? I think you did cover this a little bit, but um, is it? I would say go for it. Um, because you can make an impact so much on other people, and you know, like like we've kind of chatted about during this this last few minutes you know the the fact that you're different you're showing others who are coming up and who are going to who are going to be our future leaders in the world that it's okay to be different and to to work with people who are different and to care about others who are different so i would wholeheartedly encourage anyone to go into the teaching profession even though again in the united states right now it's a bit of a struggle and we're looked down upon um Again, I go back to what I said earlier, you got to be you. And I would highly encourage anyone to go into the teaching profession. If they have any questions, I'm always available. And uh, I would be happy to help guide them. <coughs> that is fantastic. And I think that um, <coughs> is just amazing. The, the be you thing is so simple yet so important. And um, being yourself is just like the most important thing. And Absolutely. it's been so wonderful to speak to you today. So thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to seeing this video and all the future ones from you. Thank you. Uh, it's been really lovely to speak to you. And I hope that um, <coughs> we keep in touch because we have that um, international meet thing. So that's really good. So, I agree. Thank you for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay.